Travis Schreier and Charlie Potter of the BamaOnline.com staff from Coleman Coliseum on Tuesday evening shortly before the tip-off extravaganza for Avery Johnson and Christy Curry and the men's and women's basketball teams. But first, going to talk a little football as we were just inside Alabama's Tuesday afternoon practice. Weather outside forcing the Crimson Tide indoors, working in helmets and shoulder pads is what we saw in there. And as is the case going into every bye week, you want to know about the health of this football team. And so, Charlie, where do you think things stand right now? Uh, you know, before the Tennessee game, it was pretty much a clean bill of health. You know, Alabama had been pretty lucky in uh, seven consecutive games. But that eighth one, you know, they, uh, they got bit by a little bit of the injury bug. You know, we saw Eddie Jackson go down with a knee injury. He was able to come back in. He was at practice today, so that's a good sign. Uh, but not at practice was uh, Dominic Jackson and uh, Ronnie Harrison, who both uh, sustained ankle sprains. Um, yeah, I really didn't expect them to be out there. I think this is something, especially with it being a bye week, that uh, they're going to let take some time to heal, you know, not mm -hmm. rush them back. Because obviously they have time before that big LSU game. But uh, as of right now, though, those are the only guys that seem to be limited by anything. Yeah, and with Dom not out there, we saw Brandon Green back in his number 58 jersey, which, you know, you wonder about the guy's locker sometimes. Yeah. What does it look like? He's, he, had two, he must have two number 58 helmet, I mean, a 58 helmet, an 89 helmet, mm -hmm. uh, but the reliable Brandon Green working with the offensive line today, and that's really what this week is about. Heal up, uh, because when you talk about what's coming next, you think it's been a physical stretch, and it has been. <laughs> Uh, the test of all tests in terms of big, fast, strong human beings colliding is coming up a week from Saturday night. Um, in terms of areas of this team that, that need to clean some things up, I think it sort of coincides with the offensive line. We did see Cameron Robinson at practice today, and apparently he's been dealing with some things too, but that's an area which isn't coming off probably its best game of the season. Again, another spot where it's time to, to sort of try to clean those things up. Yeah, I mean, you know, five sacks against Tennessee, that's that's not what I was expecting to see coming out of this team. You know, we have seen that, you know, Cam has been limited a bit. Um, you know, there's he probably didn't do as much when we left. He's not going to do much right. today uh, with it again being the bye week. But that's obviously something they have to clean up, and not just in protecting Jake, but, you know, you, you haven't had that number two back that you're used to. So LSU is going to key in on stopping Derrick Henry. You need, you need to be able to push those – defenders out of the way and uh, make room for the running game, not just to protect Jake, but to, to get things going on the ground. I mean, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a grinded out game. If you can't do that, you're going to be in trouble. Either that or you're going to have to continue to get out of our Darius Stewart, what yeah. you got on Saturday. Now, if you can get two guys catching passes like we saw with Ridley and Stewart uh, and even some O.J. Howard in there, then you got a shot. Yeah. But you're right. The, we've talked about this plenty. Uh, the carry split isn't narrowing. It did not narrow Saturday <laughs> evening at Bryant-Denny Stadium. It actually widened, I think. Uh, it was Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry in the second half. But uh, defensively, um, really, it's just keep doing what you're doing at this point. They had the one drive late in the game that was a little bit of a surprise, frankly. You don't expect this defense to need a mulligan, but you got to give Tennessee a lot of credit, too. Thought they were very aggressive in their approach. Uh, took shots down the field. It paid off. Josh Dobbs made some great throws. That's going to happen. But for the most part, you feel like status quo for this defense, although with LSU coming up, it's time to go back probably to that Arkansas mode, to that Georgia mode, Wisconsin, that type of approach. But, I mean, at the same time, though, you know, their offense is kind of a little bit similar to Tennessee in that Brandon Harris can make plays run. with his legs. Yeah. And he's he's been perfect on his passes. I don't think he's thrown an interception all season. And they have guys on the edge that can you know, do some damage. I'm not saying this is a Texas A&M style team no. in terms of the way they pass. I know pass. what you're saying. They're versatile exactly. in their skill. But um, it's, it's going to be kind of the same thing I guess they saw this past week in terms of a dual threat um, and then a guy that can, can make – passes or make plays through the air and has I, I would say probably more versatile weapons yeah they're outside guys Doral and and uh, Dupree or they have the potential to be the next Landry and Beckham yeah. not saying they're there yet no, yeah. but in terms of talent they're Sunday guys mm -hmm. they're going to play in the National Football League um, and Harris yeah uh, after seeing Josh Dobbs have some success with some design runs I don't think there's any doubt Les always likes to pull some option out yeah. against Alabama we've seen that in the past so that wouldn't mm -hmm. surprise me at all uh, but you're going to see it down the road, too, Dak Prescott, yeah. another guy that's going to be a threat running the football, obviously. So that aspect of it does come in. Uh, obviously, though, it starts with Leonard Fournette and a very good LSU 
offensive line, probably the best in the SEC. I don't think there's any probably about it. So special teams-wise, though, you feel good going into the bye week. You talk about going into a break mm -hmm. confident. They have to be in just about every aspect of that. Yeah, I mean, Adam Griffith has completely turned things around. You know, I don't think they're going to try him out there for any 45-plus yard field goals anymore. But in terms of what he's been able to do in a consistent level, it's, it's been impressive. Not only that, but you know, Tennessee and, and Texas A&M had two of the most dangerous return games in the country. And Griffith just completely eliminated it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw J.K. Scott and the, and the punt team give up a punt return, but the coverage has shored things up, and J.K. looks like his – He's what he was last year. So, I mean, it's you have to feel good coming into the bye week of what you've seen in special teams. Yeah, it's a big boost because it's a game like LSU. We've seen it in the past. Special teams <laughs> yeah. have come up just a little bit big. Uh, the difference in 2011 was Alabama made its kicks in New Orleans, didn't make them here. Uh, and a lot of times, though, kicks in games like this aren't exactly chip shots mm -hmm. because the defenses are so good, especially Alabama's. When you look at the last two games, I think Texas A&M, Tennessee combined to try six field goals of 51 yards or longer. Can't really throw kickers under the bus when you're trying them from that far out. But um, we got uh, some hoops tonight. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited for the dunk contest. You you're, you're in that, right? I mean, uh, no. What you, I, you I got to, the between the legs? I had to do the withdrawal. Oh, withdrawal. Yeah. hammy? A little bit of a cold. Yeah, yeah. a little, little bit of a sinus infection. So, All right. But uh, I'm, I'm ready to see what, what Retton can do. I don't think a lot of people have been talking about He's a freak. I've, you've heard a lot about Jimmy. He's done it in games. Forget well, yeah. about in this. He's... He can do I'm, it in games. What I'm saying is just heading into the season, you've heard yeah. a lot about getting the ball to Jimmy and the freshmen that are coming in. Mm -hmm. and, you know, this is Retton's last year, and we've seen how explosive a playmaker he can be. I think this is a night where he can remind a few people what he can do on the court. He's an NBA athlete. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's just a matter of can his game round into form. And you're right, it'll be a lot of fun to watch this evening at Coleman Coliseum. So for Charlie Potter, I'm Travis Ryer reminding you to keep it right here on BamaOnline.com for more coverage of Crimson Tide Athletics.